Well, welcome. Uh, it's, it's good to see you. We're nearing the end of the uh, spring term, but we have uh, two uh, more events uh, here to, on Thursday. Eric Schmidt is, is speaking, and I think you can find out more about that on the, the website. But tonight, we have a good friend of Duke, a good friend of the program, and someone who's very prominent <laughs> in, in the news, uh, Louis DeJoy. And so I thank you, Lewis, for coming down. We were able to arrange it at the last minute to make it possible. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. And you are well known to uh, the, the students here who've seen you at other events in the past, uh, but they may not know your backstory. And so I want you to tell a little bit about how you got started in the logistics business uh, before you became Postmaster General. So I, I know it began with your family, your dad's business. Can if you just talk briefly about that? Sure. Well, first of all, well, thank you, everybody, and thank you for uh, your interest in what's going on with me and the United States Postal Service, and I hope all your mail is being delivered timely. We try, <laughs> we try real hard to, uh, 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 you know, to do that. Um, I was, uh, back to the, to the business, I, I, was, you know, I was born in Brooklyn, New York, and my parents... Uh, no one would ever be able to yeah, tell that, yeah, but it's, uh, yeah. I'm glad you flagged that. And uh, you know, my parents were um, um, typical 1950s Brooklyn. Uh, they they uh, got married when they were 16, 17 years old. Uh, my mom had me when she was 17. They both had about ninth grade educations. And um, I went, uh, uh, went off to college in Florida and became a, a CPA. She actually had four, four brothers and she had five kids at the time she was 23. And uh, life was tough and my dad eventually was a truck driver and eventually got a couple of trucks and built a small you know, trucking uh, company uh, with uh, maybe eight or nine employees, and uh, they were out on Long Island, and that went on for a, a number of years. I went off, became an accountant, was working in auditing uh, in Florida, uh, and going around to large, medium-sized type businesses, uh, you know, auditing and doing tax returns and so forth, and I really became interested in uh, you know, how business worked, the, the detailed process of it, uh, the turnaround, solving problems within the, the total organizational process of manufacturing and transportation. There was no such thing as, you know, supply chain or logistics then. It was everything was like turnkey projects is what they, what they, what they called it. And um, uh, after four years in accounting, I think it was 25, I got bored with it. I saw at the end of the hallway, what the, this was before accounting, you were doing consulting and all that stuff that got the accounting industry in trouble, right? They were just doing auditing and tax returns. And uh, so I looked down the hallway and saw the managing partner there and he was doing the same thing I was, tax returns. I said, this is too visible for me for the rest of my uh, uh, career. And I, so I moved back to New York and I was gonna go to um, you know, law school or get an MBA and my dad had gotten hurt and I had this small trucking company, it was just the family, my mother, my, my father, and uh, my two brothers and one neighbor. <laughs> and they worked in the, in the company and a couple of drivers, 20-year-old trucks. My first day showing up, I said, well, let me go try and whip this up and fix it, you know, quickly, and then go back, go, go to school. And the first day I showed up, I went to the bank with them, and the bank said, if you guys bounce one more check, we're closing your accounts. So I thought it was just an accounting error. Right? And when I went in there, it wasn't. We were basically going, uh, uh, you know, having significant financial problems. And I tried then to salvage that and build a, a trucking company for about five years. Uh, and we got better, but I just could never get it to, sc to scale. And then with the advent of, you know, I think it was the IBM XT or AT, um, and some business applications, both in terms of sales and you know sales materials like Harvard graphics that for you could put solutions together and, and talk about it and then the applications of you know running businesses which were warehouse management and so forth I invested everything I could in, into that and I remember running around to, to, to clients uh, like AMP and saying hey you can take this terminal tie it to a modem and you know, come in and see your inventory if you come into my warehouse. And I began to build, I had maybe 
20 employees when I started that, uh, and eventually built it into probably one of the highest, most complex logistics organizations in the world, doing large projects for Verizon Wireless, Disney. If you ordered a Disney toy, it came through me. If you ordered a Verizon phone, it came through me. Uh, a lot of defense, Boeing, you know, uh, uh, contracts. Eventually, so I, I merged it with XPO, and it became even bigger. Uh, uh, and it's a big part of XPO's logistics, uh, uh, you know, complement. Right and now. that that company that you were describing was called Newbreed. Is that right? It was right? Newbreed. Yes. Newbreed. Yeah. So, so let, just so I have it, you were an early adopter of technology, mm -hmm. and and as as much a technology services company as a logistics company. At, uh, at some point, is that, yeah. is that fair? Yeah, well we would, you know, we, we, the two, one of the, the basic thing I found when I was building a logistics company was that, uh, and we started to get some cash flow and, and, and so forth, uh, that most clients of third party logistics companies always complained that they didn't have good IT systems. Um, they also complained that they didn't want to pay for good IT systems. Yeah. And um, uh, it was becoming, uh, you know, they couldn't get out of, large organizations couldn't get out of their way themselves. And um, uh, uh, we were, very, you know, tried to become very nimble is what we wanted to lead with. So uh, I built it, you know, I have, a, you know, I hired good people along the way. I, I don't think one of them might be here. Where is this? Is Ashwak here? I see, uh, there he is, my CIO. He worked for me for 30 something years and eventually became president in XBO. Uh, group. I had lots of long-term people on my journey. My assistant, Heather Clark, been with 29 years. Uh -huh. um, but we, therefore, built a very intensive, comprehensive, integrated s logistics system uh, and enabled uh, uh, people to access our structure and, therefore, our operational uh, in, in environment across the country pretty easily. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, that enabled us to sell our infrastructure slice by slice and get big, big clients that we blew, you know. I had like 30 Boeing contracts, a whole bunch of, you know. Uh, these were very, very sophisticated uh, things. And we were often rated, not weren't the biggest, because I only wanted to do big, complex deals, we, we, you know, but we were always rated very, very high on all the investment banking uh, 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 firms rating for complex logistics solutions providers, IT enabled logistics solutions. So I'm providers. seeing I'm seeing some themes. One is turnaround. You, you mm. were a turnaround guy. Mm -hmm. And you also were in a business where people wanted good service but didn't want to pay for it. So I think this is good preparation for <laughs> where we're going. But um, I'm getting back I'm getting there two cents at a time. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, other the other thing of your public persona, of course, uh, at some point you're you've built a successful company and at some point, you also became a prominent donor uh, to, to political uh, campaigns. And that got a lot of attention, too. So what, what, was, the, what was the appeal or the, the motivation for that? Well, no, first of all, I always felt right, that um, I, I always want, you know, coming from my background, I always wanted to be a, a consequential and involved um, in, individual both in terms of my, my business, I wanted to do you know, consequential work, uh, and we'll get to the political one. Also in my community, which is why I had you know, a foundation and always gave and were always involved in terms of giving in the community, right? And then the third pillar was I cared about how the country was run, right? And uh, that is why I you know, engaged all three with the same intensity in terms of uh, 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 you know, in, in involvement. I happen most days in my life, not, you know, always ha have happened to be a Republican. Uh, and uh, that meant not necessarily that I, it, in fact, it meant that I was involved to criticize Republicans because I wanted them to get better at what we, uh, what we were doing. And the best way to do that is to be involved with it, right? Because I cared about how the country worked. And that's, that went on for, for, you know, for, uh, you know, for 20 years something years, you know, before I, uh, you know, before I got here. I started in the, in the late 90s being active and involved um, as I started to make money and get, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 both in philanthropy uh, and in, in, in politics with the same amount of intensity in both. Okay, so that, that brings us to 2020 uh, and... Where are we today? 
2020. Well, we're in 2022 today, but I wanted to, I, I, I want to <laughs> fast forward to uh, the decision uh, to, well, basically to make you postmaster general, yeah. and ha help us understand how that happens. Does the president get to pick it? How how is how is that job? Given because some jobs like you know secretary of this or assistant secretary of that that the president just names how is the postmaster general picked? Uh, 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 just for a little background, the postal service is an independent organization, right? In 1970, 71, they, uh, 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 the the Congress uh, they separated the it's not a cabinet position, so therefore it's not appointed by the president. They separated the organization and gave it its marching orders and put a nine-person board in charge of it. The board is selected by the, uh, by, by the president, nominated by the president. Uh, it, the board uh, members are nominated. The bo board members are nominated by the president. It can never be. Uh, and confirmed by Senate? Or? Confirmed by Senate. Uh, five, it can never be, uh, it, it's a five, four, um, uh, five Republicans, four Democrats, or five Democrats, four Republicans. And the terms are specific terms that don't, start when you get in there. They start whenever they start, and you fill those terms. Right? So you can come in, uh, and you have to go, it's a, it's, it, it, it's, a, uh, uh, it, it's a process. And the whole main purpose of separating it from the cabinet, and by having this kind of match in terms of uh, political party, was to keep it from being political, <laughs> right? Which uh, 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 you can argue how successful that was in terms of, uh, 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 you know, the uh, 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 board. Then that board uh, uh, goes and picks a postmaster general, and uh, they have a process to do so. It has evolved over, over years, but before 1970, it was the president's appointment, and there's a whole long history of, of, of uh, how, uh, what, how and what and who, in terms of postmaster generals, uh, how, how actually politically involved. Usually the postmaster general Oftentimes, was a big campaign, uh, you know, person for the, uh, uh, you know, for the then elected Back in the know, day. president. Yeah, yeah. But in this case, uh, actually, uh, uh, believe it or not, the president uh, or the treasury had nothing to do with with my with my uh, hiring. In fact, uh, uh, I did not make the president aware uh, that I uh, was good, considering taking the position until after they had offered me. Uh, 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 the position for a lot of reasons, uh, you know, for a lot of reasons at the time. Well, but you had supported uh, Trump in 16, so presumably there were jobs in the administration you could have had, yeah. because if you're a capable person, they need to fill mm -hmm. lots and lots of slots. Yeah, and I was did not. Did of those interest you? I, I, I had, there were things that were offered to me in the, in the presidential appointee side, when you could think, you know, ambassador or something like that. But it was not, I had just come out of, uh, uh, my company, I just... I don't see you as an ambassador, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Neither did my family. <laughs> <laughs> neither did my family. I had just uh, uh, retired from my executive role at the uh, company and bestowed it upon Ashfaq Chowdhury, who's here, I see him in the audience, and uh, went on the board mm -hmm. for a couple of years, and I began building a small but uh, strategic investment office. I had, you know, had an office that had maybe eight or nine employees, and we were looking, investing in real estate and some other strategic types of things. And I stayed involved in the, uh, 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 you know, political side of, uh, of, uh, the, uh, uh, of the party in terms of what was uh, uh, going on around the state and around the nation, and uh, was kind of had a couple of years of relaxing and getting, uh, 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 you know, evaluating what I wanted to do long term. Then the pandemic hit, uh, and it, you know the nation was in a crisis. The postal service was in a crisis. I was able. I was told to stay home, <laughs> and uh, then I had you know the, I got recruited for this and was asked. And you know had had we not been in the pandemic at the time, had it not been a crisis environment both within the postal service or and and, and the nation, I don't actually know that I would have actually. You know, taken the you know taking the job, but you know, uh, uh, it 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 uh, uh, it was in some really you know not good shape. Well, yeah. I want to ask you about yeah. that because yeah. I was reading up on the uh, the challenges that the postal service faced in 2020. 
it doesn't sound like a job you one would want to have because weren't they going to run out? You said they're going to run out of cash in three months or something like that. It, the whole thing could have collapsed on your watch, and then you're the one to blame for it, right? I mean, that's well, a, it's a in risky... many ways, it did collapse, and I was the one who got blamed for it, okay. right? <laughs> okay. Thanks. So that's fine. That's fine. I'm still standing. Uh, the Listen, the board, uh, when I... Look, look, it was pretty simple, right? The board had asked me to, uh, uh, I, I was searched out, I was recruited, and then the board had asked me what I thought. I did some research on the whole thing. I do know the Postal Service. I had contracted with it for a long, um, uh, uh, from uh, yeah, from new, my okay, Newbury yeah. days. And, um, uh, you know, there's a time in life when there's a, you know, there's a, something that aligns with your agenda, which mine was not full, right? In terms of, uh, uh, you know, I'd been, I'd been encumbered most of my life, uh, you know, building the, you know, the business, I was, it was not full. It aligns with what it is that you think you're able to, uh, uh, to do. And I meant that both from the standpoint of my operational you know, experience, my leadership experience. I tend to be able to move, organ, you, know, uh, uh, you know, organizations. And also my political experience, which I thought would be helpful uh, and actually wound up proving to be in terms of, uh, you know, shaping, uh, shaping the organization. And the board was needy. <laughs> I mean, th this was, you know, there was significant, you know, uh, uh, you know, problems. So what were those? I mean, running out of cash in three months, um, 650,000 person organization running out of cash in three months. They had lost $87 billion over the last uh, seven years, negative $135 billion balance sheet, uh, hadn't made their service standards in, 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 in 10 years, right? 40% turnover in a, 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 you know, with 250,000 people within the organization. They had not, uh, our facilities were decrepit, uh, and, 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 and still are, had no operational strategy, no organizational strategy. The GAO had put out over the last nine years that the organization was, um, uh, 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 could, you know, could go, you know, kaplunk. Uh, they, that's what they do in Washington. They write up nice reports. They do a bunch of critiques. They mail it out to everybody. Everybody goes, hmm, puts it in the drawer. Nobody does a thing. And that's what went on with the Postal Service over the last 10 years. Management could not uh, uh, when you look at what the GAO has said over the years, one of, what's, what kept the organization behind? Um, um, uh, well, there's, 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 you know, uh, uh, number one, we had a defunct pricing model. Over the last 10 years, we were in 19, uh, in 2006, the Congress passed the PAEA, which basically uh, said, okay, Postal Service, you can go and compete in the, pack, you know, in the competitive market but you're going to, uh, you're only going to be able to raise your prices uh, 1% a year, right? Uh, C, you, know, what, you know, whatever, CPI, it was a very, very small amount of, uh, of money. Uh, and then they also put the legislation on it to pre-fund um, uh, all their employees. So if you came to work, if Andrew came into work at the Postal Service. Pre-fund the retirement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, tomorrow. Uh, 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 I'd have to fund him for the next 75 years, right? And it, it was pre-funding for, you know, for, for, for 75 years. Huge, huge uh, 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 burden. And the organization just began losing seven, eight, nine billion dollars a year because, because volume, mail volume, over the last, at that 10 year period, had dropped 40 percent, 40 percent. And the PRC, Postal Regulatory Commission, when, you know, this was a 10 year, uh, eva you know, 10-year test, which, you know, was a big reason that, you know, kind of destroyed the place. The PRC took four years, Postal Regulatory Commission, to evaluate what happened over the last 10 years, even though we were bleeding a lot of money. They took four years to figure out that diminishing mail volumes matter, right? right? The fact that you, and the fact that, you know, 40% reduction in, in, in volume, and the fact that every year we add one million addresses, you know, to our delivery, uh, uh, thing, just totally, you know, operationally, you know, get, killed the organization. So, but let me 
press that because that's di that's very different from the kinds of challenges you probably faced in a private sector company where you didn't have Congress making unfunded mandates on you like the 75 year thing and you probably had a little more flexibility to charge change your pricing scheme to, f so in this sense does the private sector uh, experience translate, in, given the constraints that you described? Well, it's a little bit, um, so, so, and here's where I've differed and why I've had so much, uh, uh, we have bad pricing, we priced bad contract, we had bad pricing, right? You go fight and fix it, right? You fix the contract, you fix the organization, you break the contract, you pay, you get at, right? And, and, and just to be clear, by bad pricing, you have to change, charge the same price to send a letter to Anchorage, Alaska, that it t costs to send around the corner, right? Yeah, that, that th there's more, so, you know, this thing called the universal service obligation. That's right? what I just described? Yeah, yeah. universal service obligation, which is ill-defined. It has been ill-defined. And um, 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 there, there's two things, and you know they talk about, and this is what they, they talk in circles in Washington. That if you're in a, you know, we're one of the few organizations, other than the military, when they're at war, and uh, that actually has physical distribution, transactional things that our people do every day. Right? We go out. We process mail, we put them on trucks, we go out and we deliver. So it's, it's very, very, uh, uh, you know, tangible, uh, uh, you know, uh, stuff. And we're measured. We have the highly, most highly measured government organization. Who measures half these other agencies, right? We get measured. What our service, everybody knows what our service is. And people feel it. We have a quality auditor at the end of every delivery, right? <laughs> Looking at, did I get my mail, and, 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 and so on, and, 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 and so forth. So, uh, and that part of it, the universal service obligation kind of says, you know, we have to have fair, there's a bunch of things, fair pricing, we have to have fair pricing for every location, uh, you know, so on, and, 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 and so forth. But no real specifics other than, than that. Uh, the congressional mandates, unfunded mandates, are, you know, probably cost us two billion dollars a year in other things besides that. You know, there's um, uh, that particular um, uh, 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 thing is kind of wrapped up in the pricing. That was the base kind of pricing mm -hmm. that we had when we started. Although it got eroded by loss of volume and increasing, an increasing cost beyond the increase in our price that was able to be, you know. Okay, yes. it's worse though than you say because uh, you also came in in the middle of a pandemic. So how did the pandemic affect the post office? And the it, post office? Uh, well, it, it clobbered us in, 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 two, uh, in, in, in two ways operationally. Uh, uh, number one is that uh, we had, uh, we, the Postal Service before I got there had a significant turnover problem in getting new people to come into the organization. And that's how we were keeping, trying to keep the organization staffed. And literally, you know, 40, 45% turnover in this class of, of worker that's called, uh, was, was called non-career. I have changed it to pre-career, changing it to an apprentice, and I've already made uh, contractual changes with the union that if they're there for two years, they get converted automatically. There needs to be a long-term ambition, career ambition with our workers, and that we're trying to re-implement re, re that. But not having that, we had s unbelievable turnover, right? We couldn't, you know, we just couldn't state staff. Our employee availability went from 84, 85 percent mm. to down into the 60s, right? And we still had the same requirement, right? We couldn't not fly our plane, you know, we couldn't do like the airlines and everybody else. People still expected to get their, their, their stuff. The second thing that happened is package volume exploded. It exploded. And uh, this is a place where the Postal Service just missed it 10, or 15, you know, 10 12 years ago, and something we're, gonna, we're going after now in the Delivering for America plan. Uh, 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 you know, a, give it 500,000 letters in a trailer. You fit 5,000 packages, right? You fit 1,000 non-machinable packages, right? So the volume just completely exploded. We couldn't even get it in our buildings because we have never changed our buildings. Uh, 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 so we didn't have enough 
We didn't have enough labor to, you know, to process you know, packages. We didn't have enough uh, facility space to process packages. We didn't have enough transportation to move it. And we didn't have enough carriers to deliver it. And as packages move, so does the mail. Okay, and that, in, in, in over the whole course of that, that's how it, uh, uh, how it happened. Um, uh, and I came in June, and as you know, uh, in June, in the pandemic, a lot of the, you know, May, April, May, it was a lot in the Northeast and so forth, but as it moved through after June, uh, it went out through, through, through the whole country. And that is how we really got, uh, um, uh, you know, really impacted us. But it's worse than you say. Because, <laughs> let me tell you the ways. <laughs> no, no, no. The, you also came in in the middle of an election year, and an election year that uh, was going to see mail-in ballots play a bigger role than they had played in previous presidential elections. That, combined with your prominence as a Republican donor, caused a lot of people to connect dots and say, aha, uh, because the president is saying mail-in ballots can't be trusted. A prominent Republican donor has come in to take over the post office. He's saying the post office is broken. There's a big plot. You can see how people connected the dots. So talk about that part of the challenge, uh, which was hit you probably within a couple of weeks of, of taking office. Yeah, so um, the, the, uh, there were many dots that were connected to accuse me of many things. Um, and we could talk about the uh, uh, election to begin with. Yes, the president was making irrational statements about the Postal Service, and I called him out a number of times on it in my, uh, 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 you know, in, in, in my speech. And in Washington, no sooner that somebody makes an irrational statement that somebody else makes a counter irrational statement. And uh, uh, the fact is that, you know, as, as I've said been quoted in the press, I have no background in overthrowing nations or anything like that. <laughs> uh, we were pretty much focused on the, the organization was focused on the election and I was focused on the uh, 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 election. And we delivered on the election, it was not, you know, uh, 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 which was very, very, in, 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 you know, very, very important. And it was very, we delivered at the election uh, at the expense of, you know, election mail. We do 70 billion, $75 billion a year. Election mail is like $200 million a year. But the whole focus of the organization was on uh, you know, uh, you know, on, on the election. Okay, so you just to make sure I understood what you're saying. In order to meet the the election standard, you focused your attentions on the on 200 million dollars worth of your business rather yeah. than the 85 billion. Yeah, but that is you know. So uh, listen, the postal sir, we are the most when it comes to elections. We have been the most stable thing in the election environment over the last 10 years. States are changing their rules all the time and, and, and so forth. There are simple things. I met with uh, the Senate Majority Leader and, and the Speaker and uh, you know, the, the, the President's staff to go over what was going on. You know, postmarks are not something that we do everywhere. Mm. Significant portion of the mail does not get postmarked. Yet state laws for election laws say it has to be postmarked. Well, you know, by a certain time, this creates conflict and 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 and, and, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> when I uh, um, so you know, we put out. We had we had been very. We knew that the volume was going to be up for the election. Uh, we knew it was going to be sensitive. So we reached out to try and explain to all the secretaries of state. We sent. You know, I had my general counsel sent letters out saying, "This is what our rule. You know, try and get it mailed in a week before, in two weeks, and send your ballots out. You know, whole big thing. And you, you know, that sets up a fire every time you have any kind of position on an election, you know, product in a heated environment like that. It creates legitimate noise, mm -hmm. and then illegitimate noise. Noise to raise money." noise to you know, condemn candidates and so forth. And we had both of those things going on in, in, in the election. But the fact of the matter is, the Postal Service performed admirably during the pandemic, during that election, where election mail was probably three times what it normally, you know, what it normally does. And we've been recognized for that by both, uh, 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 you know, both parties. And I've personally been 
rec- you know, been thanked by both parties after the election was over. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of Republicans who've re- registered complaints about the 2020 election on this or that dimension after the fact uh, now. But there have have there been complaints about the postal delivery of of ballots or the pickup of delivery? There, the, as I see it, the complaints are all in other areas, not. Now, the election, you know, there, you know, there's always you, you get 10 of 10 or 12 headlines every election cycle that uh, we found ballots, you know, in, the, you know, carriers bag. So but normally that's just a carrier. Just, you know, that's a, a it's not partic- specific to the ballots. It's all the mail. <laughs> all the mail is, uh, you know, uh, uh, dumped and so forth. Now, the, listen, and this is not this is something I strengthened, but this is a postal gene thing. The election, um, uh, and I went uh, when I got in there. I put a task force together, knowing that it was with the union leadership, right? We put an infrastructure together that is permanent. We used to put infrastructures together for a couple of months before the election, and then uh, you know take it down right after. I established a permanent election infrastructure because they're year round. They're evolving, and I need sp- specific staff that are you know, that are dedicated, uh, 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 you know, dedicated to you know to it. And uh, we we amped it up. But the postal service will always deliver on elections. Uh, it is uh, 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 almost like a, a a good disease from the standpoint we can have pallets of mail, and if there's a ballot on the floor over there, five people will run and dive on it and get it into the you know get it to the truck to get it to where it's. Uh, you know where it's going, and I've seen us do phenomenal things. Getting, you know, running through aircraft, bu- you know, bundles on an aircraft to find a, you know, uh, a ballot. And some of the things are, are you know, are, are crazy. We, we process mail in Miami, and Key West is, I don't know, maybe three and a half hours away, and you know, we, 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 we uh, five o'clock cutoff uh, uh, at, at in Miami, and I got to get it to Key West by. By uh, by seven o'clock, <laughs> otherwise the ballot doesn't you know it, it doesn't count. So there's all sorts of uh, uh, you know crazy things we do, just for ballots. There's crazy things we do everywhere. I mean, yeah. okay. So the election happens. Yep. And Biden wins, and a lot of people are saying, okay, to President Biden, kick out Louis DeJoy. He was a Trump uh, appointee. Do, did President Biden even have that authority? He, to do that, and uh, did you face any job insecurity uh, in 2021? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, no, I mean, I've, uh, uh, we are, uh, you know, we had rolled out our Delivering for America plan, uh, or were just about to do it, but inside the board, they knew all the, th- all the missions that I had on the table uh, for it. They were supportive of it. Um, and um, uh, they brought in three new board members that were uh, appointed by President Biden uh, that all had the theory of, uh, you know, of, uh, of, of, of taking me out, which, you know, uh, uh, they haven't. <laughs> I work with them all the time, uh, you know, in a collaborative manner. We have different, uh, 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 you know, opinions on certain elements of, uh, of, 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 of we, they, they say the Postal Service is supposed to run like a public board. But the fact of the matter is you, you, they're political appointees and everyone has, comes from different, different uh, 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 political perspectives that they try to, which becomes, they have certain ideological initiatives in their head that are important to them to at least voice mm-hmm. at these meetings. And it's my role to collect these and try and work these, but make sure that the organization, especially that we're in a crisis right now, uh, stays focused on delivering mail and packages uh, um, and, and, and so forth. And what could those types of things uh, be? A little more energy towards um, ad, you know, uh, election mail. But uh, we can't advocate for, we're, not, we're non-political, right? we're bipartisan, and we can't advocate for things that are going to um, 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 uh, you know, uh, make us seem like we're leaning, you know, any certain way. Um, uh, electric vehicles, right? We can't, you know, we, we're, I'm trying to fix what we're, you know, what we have and get the organization uh, going. My mission is not about electric vehicles, right? It's part of our plan, but my mission is to get rid of my 30-year-old trucks that are turning, you know, don't have air conditioning, are getting on fire, 
uh, uh, and, 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 and moving so. So they, the, the, they put these three board members on that were supposed to fire me. They haven't yet. I'm still there. Uh, um, and uh, uh, which was, you know, just how the thing uh, did. Unfortunately, in the process, Ron Bloom, who was a Democrat um, in the Obama administration, um, um, the car guy, part of the GM rescue plan, very, very formidable uh, 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 guy, um, uh, there was so much outrage about my changes, and he was a big supporter, as were other Democrats on the board who are really patriots trying to support the organization. He didn't get reappointed, and that was the, uh, you know, that was the uh, loss. And I feel, you know, look, I feel bad about that. I feel bad about the heat that I even brought on the organization. But everybody wants me to, that I'm associated with, that's associated with running the organization, wants me to march on. So I, I want to ask you about your, the, the DFA, Delivery for America plan, which is really the heart of what you feel you've been, you were hired to do, right, is to this turnaround option, operation. What do you think is the most controversial or misunderstood element of that plan, that, that you had to work the hardest to explain what, what you, why you were doing it this way and not some other way that might have felt more popular? Well, the, you know, underneath the Delivering for America plan, I, listen, I went in there. I did not bring any consultants in. I did this myself with the management team. I reorganized the whole place so it, uh, you know, had a, 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 a structure prepared for transformation. Uh, so I have like 14 or 15 direct reports within the organization. And we set about finding 200 things that we needed to, uh, 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 you know, needed to fix, right? And... Uh, uh, and then we marched, we, we rolled them up into what became the, D, you know, the DFA. And I think the first thing, the first thing that uh, uh, really annoyed the heck out of everybody in, in, in Washington in the political process is that we actually had a plan. <laughs> that we actually, you know, wanted to move forward and try and fix the place. I, pu I promoted the plan. I, I don't have a copy of it here, but uh, uh, um, the, uh, I, I promoted, the, you know, we promoted the plan. And it's a, a plan is about an ideas that we're going to move forward with and have discussion. We can't just do anything. I have to go to the Postal Regulatory Commission. I deal with my, with my union leadership, who I'm very, very who I, you know, have, uh, I, I meet with more than the last five Postmaster Generals put, you know, put together. They're in, in, this, they're in this crisis management uh, 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 with me. So I put this plan out and uh, bipartisan support from the board. 100% support, and I get sued by 21 states attorney general. Sued right? on what grounds? That I have no authority to do this, that I have no, you know, really, that I have no authority to have a plan. I'm going to make right. a guess that these were mostly blue states. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I'm colorblind. <laughs> okay, right? colorblind. But it was almost like, it was almost like a secession of, the, you know, uh. and, and, and so forth. Uh, we got, you know, we got... Uh, I have lots of lawsuits. Uh, you know, the election, the election was one with really unbelievable sensationalization, with processes that we normally would do and we're always going to do and will continue to do, and judges making you know court you know making you know temporary injunctions that I can't I I, I can't uh, stop running trucks, uh, getting into what I can do in a plant. Uh, getting in what, you know, just and, and sensationalizing the fact that, uh, um, uh, that, they, that they were responsible for saving the election, which was nonsense, right? It's nonsense. We didn't, you know, uh, I've said it at the time, we don't need judges to tell us how to do anything because we know what we have to do, and we don't need 501c3s to tell us how to do anything because we know how we do it, and they're, they're actually, you know, off the mark in terms of what was, was necessary to happen. So you, you have this controversial plan, yep. uh, DFA, but it, it's DOA, dead on arrival, unless you can get support from the uh, President of the United States and from Congress, right? So you, this, is the, this is the interesting part of your assignment, was how were you able to get Congress and the President to support something given how all of the wounded memories of 2020. Uh, well, the fact of the matter is there were no wounded memories from, uh, 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 you know, from uh, actually right after the election, 
I've spoke with chair, chair, you know, chairs of the different committees, and they were, uh, you know, thankful for the, you know, for the for the performance, right? And most of those people, most of those uh, uh, Democrats, uh, the, the senators and uh, uh, Republic and uh, uh, congressmen that I, I, I testified in front of the, the House and Senate a number of times early on, probably 50 days into it, they're blaming me for everything that went on over the last uh, 20 years, and it was pretty, you know, pretty good exchange, uh, right? <laughs> pretty good exchange. And, uh, 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 but, you know, I was out with them at the White House uh, just last week for the signing, and uh, 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 very friendly and appreciative to the extent of, you know, like, you know, doing the old man hug, thing and, 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 and so forth and on both, you know, from both sides of the aisle. So how did it get done right after the election when, you know, uh, uh, that was all decided? Um, um, uh, Chairman Bloom, myself, uh, uh, got together with uh, uh, Chairwoman Maloney and, Ch and, 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 and Senator uh, uh, Peters, who was chair of the House of the Senate uh, HISCAC com uh, committee. And I said, you know, we basically said, this is going to be my operational plan, okay? If you uh, let me do my operational plan, right, I will go get support from the, you know, from the you know, Republicans. And we went on a, a year-long journey of keeping the bill narrow, right, in terms of operating restrictions on the Postal Service, uh, which were basically none. Uh, getting the legislation in there. I aligned the unions behind us. Uh, uh, the unions stayed pretty supportive of, 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 of the thing. And then I went on, I mean, I was in front of the, uh, I went to the Senate. Let me uh, just ask you about yeah. the unions. How could you, a prominent Republican, get the unions to support <laughs> your program? Uh, so I think you spend, you spend a day with me talking about how we're going to fix the place, and you're going to realize that any, you know, that that's the only reason I'm there, right? You're going to realize, and they realize it, right? And, uh, um, 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 and most of the people in the Congress realize it, and uh, we actually have a viable plan. Uh, we've pulled a lot off already. The organization is juiced. I mean, there's a real lot of excitement, and that's how I get the, uh, uh, the union. Listen, every, when I got there, everybody, the union was just a bunch, it's, when you have a big environment and, and, and Rome is burning, and you have little pockets of groups of people over here with, you know, one bucket of water in the middle, and they're trying to figure out, everybody's just trying to figure out how to make the place better. They, you know, and they have their own ideas, right, which may or may not be part of the solution. Uh, often they're not. How could, if you have a little segment, how could you not, um, uh, 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 you know, do it. And uh, uh, basically, I came in and I said, look, we're going to make a plan. And the plan's going to be based on three tenets, three specific tenets. Number one, we're going to commit to delivering to 161 million addresses six days a week. And that why? Because if he came in during a pandemic, you would have seen the importance, as I, as I said. And I also felt it was a, a, a ticket for our success in the future, which is what we based a lot of our new sales strategy on. Number two, we have to cover our cost. It's the law, right? And also, in a service business, you can't do all things at all cost, right? What, what are the, you know, which is in fact what we were doing. We charged $70 billion to do $80 billion worth of service. That's how you lose $10 billion a year, right? And uh, there's wisdom in that law that was passed in, 19, you know, uh, in 1970 in that we were supposed to cover our cost by selling postal services and products, which meant that like any business, because that's how they des designed it, you're supposed to evolve. You're supposed to change your pricing, and you're supposed to evolve your service to the market that, is, that you're heading into, which we failed to do you know, both. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, so those, were the, those two tenants, uh, six day a week, 161 million addresses, cover our cost. Uh, and the third one was, you got to believe we're a going concern. We were frozen. We were going out of business in three months, running out of cash, right? So I'm in there saying, no, we can, we can do this. We're a going, we're going to get, you know, we're a going concern. And when you do that as a leader, everybody sits around, well, how the hell are we going to do that? You know, we're running out of cash. We got this. Eh? Well, you got to have a, you have to have a, a vision for the future, mm -hmm. right? And our vision for the future was the, the, the Delivering for America plan. Right? That was our strategy. And that puts leadership in a new, you know, it puts your neck in a noose. 
That's what was, you know, so I said, hey, we're going to do this. Come on board. And, you know, everybody, everybody filed. And now we're executing on it. And we are, you know, mailers, mailers came. I mean, for what, you know, I mean, we raised the, we're raising the stamp price two cents now. I get almost no complaints on that. I get a lot of commercial mailer, of which is 60% of our business is business. 60% of our business is business. And they have been subsidized, and I tell them this, and they boo me and all this, but <laughs> I keep raising price. They have been subsidized over the last 10 years because that $10 billion that should have gone to the Postal Service, okay, has gone to their businesses. These are the big major mailers, and that's, you know, I have lobbyists coming against, against me out the wazoo, right, really, and it's all driven by UPS uh, and other commercial types of organizations that uh, 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 want to keep the prices, you know, prices low and service up. Not doable, mm -hmm. you know, because we haven't evolved over the 10 years. If we made some minor changes over the last 10 years, the, the lift wouldn't be so high right now. But we are in a crisis, and, you know, we're moving forward. So that just as a footnote, uh, charging $70 billion for $80 billion of service, that is actually the model, business model of higher education. So, and we bridge... I the, think you guys are doing all right. <laughs> we bridge it with I'll philanthropy. I'll switch roles. <laughs> we bridge it with, with philanthropy. President Price. That's the, that's the gap. That's how we bridge it with the philanthropy. Okay, I, did you have challenge uh, getting uh, Republicans on board, or, or did, they, did they buy this argument? Uh, so, I had... Um, good, you know, so I had... A lot of friends from over the over the years, and uh, I never was, I mean, when I did my stuff. It was never about having asked for anything. Uh, like I wasn't a lobbyist. I was, uh, 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 you know, a supporter of uh, you know the political process and uh, certain candidates, uh, and in, in a big way over that that time period. And now I went up to uh, up, 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 you know went up to the hill frequently. I probably visited with you know, 40 senators. And this was my marching orders, more or less. I mean, I worked with Senator Schumer on this and, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know the, the Democrat, the whole Democratic side in getting our support. And I, I didn't go up there and have cocktails with them. I went up there with my plan and told them how we're going to do this with our transportation. We're going to do this with this. We're going to do this with this. And I met with probably 40, you know, about 40 senators. Uh, and then I spoke at the Senate luncheon twice. And then I had my friends, if you go back and look, at the vote for cloture on the film, you'll see oh, North Carolina senators there and Senator Portman actually talking to senators, trying to get their vote to move it forward. And then I went up to the House the day of, uh, of the, uh, the day of the vote in the House where they thought they maybe had 30 votes. I spoke at the Republican luncheon, which is you know, it wasn't all love, throwing roses, you know, There's, uh, uh, it was, uh, uh, but uh, 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 Leader McCarthy and uh, uh, Steve Scalise and uh, a lot of our North Carolina contingent were, were there. They got me in lunch, and we brought the vote up. We had 120 Republican votes. The bill passed like 345 votes to, um, uh, you know, to 91 in the House and 79 to 21 you know, in, in the Senate, and it never even got out of committee <laughs> before, uh, you know, before this year. So, so it was overwhelming bipartisan, you know, support. Is this franchisable? Can we, <laughs> congratulations, Thank congratulations. Right. Can we franchise this model? Can we do this, apply this to other public uh, policy challenges? Yeah, I, I don't, uh, I don't know. I mean, the, uh, you have to create in urgency, you know, we just did, I, I just got, before I came here, I met with uh, the, the HHS, Department of HHS. We were, we put together, how many people here ordered test kits from the Postal Service, all right? It's really unbelievable. We put that plan together in, 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 in three weeks, um, uh, and I was on, a, it started before. My kit said I'm pregnant, so I don't know what that is. <laughs> Uh, we started two days before Christmas. I put the team together and we worked all, you know, every day through Christmas, every day on the phone with the White House staff, HHS staff, and uh, uh, Defense Department staff putting this thing together. And we, within three weeks, we put together 50 locations around the country. We took in 40 million orders in the first six hours through our website. Didn't crash. 
seamlessly move the orders out. Ashfaq told me how to do this a little, you know, 20 years ago. Right? Seamlessly move the orders out to 50 different plants into an inventory control system that we had set up just for this over a couple of weeks. Uh, down to uh, the, uh, the plants where we picked and packed. We've never done that before. I mean, I did it all my life. We've never done it before. Uh, uh, and and uh, the way it was set up, those, those kits shipped that day. 60% of them arrived because it was set up by the zip codes, arrived the next day when we had the inventory. 90% arrived in, in two days. That's the power of the Postal Service with an operational strategy moving forward. And that's you know, what you'll, you'll see us uh, you know, doing before. But uh, you know, we worked very, very closely with the White House through all this, um, uh, uh, both on, uh, on that. And what was the question again? I forget. Can this be trans franchised to other policy so problems? So the point I'm making on that is there was another, that was another environment where a bunch of people came together and they wanted to do something, and they didn't know how to do it. So there was an urgency, and there was a specific you know, um, uh, exp you know, uh, 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 experienced you know, person that was in charge of something. And they basically did everything I just said to do. Right? And boom, it got, you know, it, it got done. There was not a lot of, and, and as the pressure comes off, and that's why government is great in a crisis, right? That's because you're forced to act, right? And you're forced to make trade-offs, and you're forced to compromise and get to the end, you know, end result. We, you know, to the extent that we can get, you know, get serious end goals in things, you know, gov the government is loaded with smart people, uh, loaded with, you know, collaborators. They just don't know what the heck to collaborate on, right? That's, you know, part of the, you know, part, you know, part of the issue. So is this a model? Um, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't uh, uh, know. Look, like everything else, it kind of starts from the top, right? All, you know, I think that is where, uh, uh, where, where things, you know, need to, you know, get, uh, 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 you know, get better. We had, um, it, you know, um, um, and, and unless it could start at the top of an agency, it could start at the top of, you know, could start with a president that is able to unite people to make, you know, uh, you know to make uh, uh, good decisions, it, it, you know. But at the end of the day, it's not going to bubble up. Right? It's just not going to bubble, uh, you know, bubble up. In this particular case, uh, 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 I was able to sell a plan for improvement and uh, had, uh, 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 you know, the trust of at least half the, the Congress. Uh, and I earned the trust of, the other, of most of the other half. And uh, 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 that is, you know, you know, basically why it, uh, uh, and I earned the trust of the union. Union is very, very influential. In, in, in some of these things, they're big, big donors to big parts of the, uh, uh, you know, big parts of the government. So, okay, I've got a couple more questions, and then we'll take some. We'll have time for some from the audience. I want to ask you now to reflect on uh, public service. The you you describe the upside of it, where you can confront a big problem and make a difference. The downside is you become a lightning rod for really vicious attacks, and your family becomes a lightning rod for vicious attacks. This is the cost of public service. On balance, do you think it's worth it? Did you, are there, can we make changes to reduce the needless costs of public service? Uh, well, I mean, I think, um, so from, I can tell you, from my standpoint, <coughs> I, uh, <coughs> it had, you know, momentary impact on me when I look at something and re I'm like, what is, what is that, that about? And then, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I moved on. It made me more, <coughs> more, you know, tenacious. Now, I, um, I have my career behind me. <coughs> I am fortunate enough to be, to, if I, if I, you know, I landed someplace, you know, out in the street. I'm not out in the street. I've amassed a, a, a enough uh, wealth to carry me, you know, in, you know, in, in, into the future. I amassed enough wealth to hire lawyers and not, you know, not worry about the cost of it. Uh, and I was pretty. I like doing important work, uh, and this is important work. It was something I really know how to do. There was no. I'm not a policy person. I'm trying to deliver mail and packages. That's always the right way and cover our cost. So the mission was pretty, you know, uh, pretty aligned. So uh, it, it uh, and I wanted to make change, right? I wanted to make change. 
And you can go into government and not want to make change and probably survive. That's what most of the government does, right? That's what most of it, 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 it does. When you come out uh, and you try and initiate change, that's where all the, uh, uh, you know, where all the uh, uh, you know, activity uh, uh, comes from. But I will tell you this, that, um, it, you know, it, I, it's, it's important. I'm blessed to run this organization. I am really having the, you know, like, I am the most, I've done a lot of great stuff in my life, right? And, and had a good journey from nowhere to, to, to something. But there's nothing, I've never been so fulfilled in terms of, you know, absolutely going out, being that, you know, I have a good, I'm in good favor with the employees, I'm in good favor with the, with the, with the union, I'm getting in good favor with the mailers because I'm, you know, good enough favor. Nobody likes when you raise prices, you know, but I keep telling them, I'm a price raiser. Right? I have to cover, you know, and I, I try and be square and direct. Uh, uh, so I would say, you know, take a chance at it. Uh, it depends, you know, if you, if you get in the limelight, know uh, that there's going to be rocks coming at you. So you need to learn how to do duck or, 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 or so. But for, for me, and my family is even, you know, to my wife uh, and, and, and my son, my daughter, I don't know, uh, but my wife and son said if I quit, they'd never talk to me again. At, in the heat, in the heat of, uh, of the, uh, of the, uh, they didn't want time. to see you back home, is what you're saying. <laughs> they wanted you back. I don't know what motivated them, but uh, uh, they uh, uh, were supportive. Okay, so let I, we. I want you, uh, if you have a question, to come up front, and I'll ask my last question while they're getting in line. Uh, so, I have an idea for you, and you, I just want you to think about this. A Coach K stamp. <laughs> well, what, what are the chances of that? It needs to be dead. Ah, okay. No, no, I won't wish that. So, it, it, to be on the stamp, it has to be a, a former American yeah. who has passed. Yeah. But uh, it's actually a fun part. I, I get to sign off. I have my own stamp committee. I appoint the stamp <laughs> committee, and they select the stamps, and I get to review and sign off on, you know, on all the stamps. And we have, it's a, we have wonderful uh, uh, you know, ceremonies around the you know, around the, the nation, you know, with, 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 there's so many cool things about this organization. It's just really, you know, uh, uh, as I said, I'm blessed to do it. I go out to rural America and swear in postmasters and their whole, their families are there. And it's like the proudest moment. Uh, and you, you, you read, I'm reading the thing and you can see their hands shaking from excitement and, 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 and so forth. And it's really kind of a militaristic type of organization. I mean, they follow. We have 40-year-old handbooks that I just collected them all that tell us, I mean, they're 40 years old, haven't been changed in 40 years, right? They tell, teach us how to do things wrong, and we follow them religiously, right? <laughs> religiously, right? So I've just collected them all, and I'm, my mission is to get them down to under 100. I mean, you know, we had 860. I'm going to get them down to under 100, and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to commercialize them. Why do I need to commercialize them? Well, our business in the mail business is getting smaller. Our monopoly is eroding. It, it became almost an obligation, right, by putting this, you know, by putting this deliver 161 million addresses six days a week into law, I feel we've strengthened it a little, but by the nation saying, this is important to us, right? That's what just happened last week. This is important to us. We want to deliver to 161 million, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, you know million, million addresses. But the rest of our business is going to only grow in the commercial marketplace. And in the commercial marketplace, we compete with FedEx and UPS and Amazon. And those guys are really, really good. <laughs> really, really good. And we're not. We're not. We have, a, we have a bad transactional processes and a horrible infrastructure that, you know, that, that, that I'm out to change. It's the next big thing. Watch us. It's going to be really cool. I'm going to put a lot of money into our, you know, in, into our, in, into our network and improving our service with a new product line called USPS Connect, uh, which deals with small business, you know, small, local communities, regional deliveries, and na nationwide deliveries. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be really cool. All right. We have a question here. Hi. Um, thank you so much for being here. I know everyone has really enjoyed listening to you. 
um, and being a part of AGS and coming and speaking. Um, I just, my question is more related to the 2020 election. So I actually worked as an absentee ballot clerk, so I saw the opposite side of it. Um, and I'm from South Carolina, so I worked in South Carolina, which is a, a majority Republican state. And on the other side of it, I saw, you know, the, the people coming in, they would even hand drop their absentee ballots off because they were worried about the security side of it. So how do you think that we as like a nation and as the Postal Service can continue and prove that it's safe to drop off an absentee ballot and... Um, because, you know, there's many ways, it depends on state, but you can see it that it's been received usually on some form of online, um, public, like, online website. So how do we continue and strengthen our so, belief in it? So, first of all, um, stop paying attention to a lot of Twitter activity, <laughs> right? Because the, the, uh, the, the security of the ma mail-in ballot is, you know, pretty good. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the president just announced, in fact, I spoke with the, the White House team a couple of weeks ago, just announced, uh, uh, it was $5 billion to uh, put into the election process, go vote by mail and other uh, the things. I think a lot of the action needs to come uh, 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 from, stand, you know, I'm a proponent, I'm a proponent, I have to be careful, I want to say, I'm a proponent of standardization across the state side to a, certain, to a certain extent, but when you get into that, then you get into federalizing the elections, right? Because how else are you going to get it to be that way? And that's a, that's a bomb burner, right? <laughs> In terms of, uh, you know, trying to uh, uh, roll, roll that stuff out. I think the big thing would be we have pushed for to put a barcode on the ballot, a barcode on the ballot, mail in, make it all first class mail going out, and coming, you know, uh, coming back, we have very, very good. If you put a barcode on a ballot, and uh, we can track, we can track. I mean, it's just unbelievable. We can track. We're an investigative, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, so, you know, uh, you know, organization. I have three thousand law enforcement agents also uh, that we do sweeps on. So I think if we can get that, and Chairwoman Maloney. Uh, 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 was is, is is an advocate, you know, you know, for that, and I think it would ease, you know, uh, ease the process and bring um, a, a level of proving out how really good the system actually is, right? And uh, 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 but we have you have to. I mean, there's a lot of ways to pass a lot of information around that people believe and become a big part of the discussion. Uh, um, um, you know, because we're able to do that these days. Next. Uh, thanks for being here, Mr. DeJoy. Mm -hmm. Down the road a little bit, they might ask you to make a Dean Smith stamp. Uh, and he would qualify. That, qualify uh, for that. Yeah, yeah, send in the request. <laughs> I, I know people. <laughs> uh, but my question is, um, you know, some people might say you need to mail a, 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 a package. We have a market for that. You... And, but now we don't, we don't need people to be able to mail letters. We don't need to subsidize that because we have the Internet. You can send them a text. You can send them an email. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that? All right, who, who, who's subsidizing it? The, the taxpayer, right? Yeah, well, there's some misinformation. I hope you don't tweet that. Well, you send... <laughs> you, don't, you don't subsidize that. We, we make all our money. We get v almost no taxpayer, uh, no taxpayer. We get like $35 million a year. Okay. I got $10 billion during COVID because I went up and demanded it from the White House and from, you know, the because we continue to deliver mail. They gave $9 billion to Delta. They didn't fly anything, right? We continue to deliver mail when we, we didn't have it. But uh, listen, the mail, uh, mail is, we projected to continue to drop about 2 to 3% a year. Uh, we, we were going to go from, uh, we had almost six pieces per mail per delivery stop 10 years ago down to about three now, going to 1.76, unless I do something uh, uh, different. Mm -hmm. But the nation has just spoken, right? They want us to continue to deliver and, and go to every address in America six days, you know, six days a week. And the price of mail uh, will continue to grow. We're still the most affordable in the world, by far. The price of mail will continue to grow. My plan is to design an integrated, in fact, I had this in the legislation, an integrated mail and package network where we move everything together 
to the same location. My, my carriers are going to every house every day, and their bags have rue. And my goal is with the most cost-effective way to get 20, 30 packages on every route, and I make a few billion dollars more, and that's the only way we get to keep mail, and I have to get cost out of the system to do that. We don't get any subsidies. It's on, you know, uh, uh, you know on, on us to do. Does it work? Directionally, I think I'm doing everything right in terms of operational uh, 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 stuff. Um, you know, we'll see as we get closer. I mean, we have, eight, you know, 8.5% inflation today. That was not my budget last year, 8.5% inflation. And I have people telling me not to raise rates. Uh, uh, but we don't get subsidies, and, um, uh, and uh, you know, we, we just need to operate better. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. All right, thanks. Next. Thank you so much for coming, sir. I think this is on. Um, I found it really rewarding to listen to your experiences as you navigated this transition from a private sector to a public sector life. I wonder, um, how, have, how do you balance your private interests, your pi private business interests, with your public commission? Yeah. What are some of the trade-offs you've had to make along the way? Yeah. So, uh, it's, a good, it's a good question, and you get accused of uh, a, 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 a lot of things. The way I balance it is by following the law, period. Right, and then uh, and that's what I have done since I've come. You know, I had lots of investments uh, uh, that I had to sell off, as instructed by the, uh, um, uh, the Office of Personnel Management and also our own, uh, 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 you know, organization. Right, so they, you come in. See, the Postal Service is not like my wife was an ambassador, and you go in and you spend a year looking. They evaluate everything that you're doing, and uh, you know they say you got to do this, this, and this, and you got to do it within 90 days. Postal service is different. You come in, right? And I had to respond. I didn't want to start until September. And they said, no, we need you now. So I, I jumped in within like 30 days. And then you go in and you put your, all your investments in. And then you're working away. And it, they take 60 days to review all your investments. And they come back and tell you. All right, it, and in the process, you recuse yourself. And they tell you what you need to get rid of and what you need to, how, what you need to change. And when in the process of working, uh, 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 I make those changes. Right? All those changes are public information. Every single thing I do is public, with my finances, public information. Right? And then what people, uh, what 501c3s will do is say, oh, we made this transaction. This could have been illegal. It's like we saw him in the restaurant eating dinner, and then we saw him leave. He could have run out on bill. This is, you know, what the, the scenario is. But I follow the law. There's strict guidelines on what it is uh, uh, that I can and cannot do. Uh, and we have people in the organization to, to set up. I disposed of many of, uh, uh, many of uh, the, 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 the assets that I had under instruction. You have to do this after I was in. Uh, uh, would I have done it, you know, had I known how to do all this before I went in? Um, I don't know. You know, I, I'm looking backwards, what I know today Yes, I would have, but it was a big thing to depart with some things that you spent a lot, a lot of time, you know, uh, you know, building up with at, you know, at, at the time. So you have to be, you know, very mindful of that. I have people both on the on my personal side that watch for this, and also within the organization that watch for it. And then we have the whole rest of the country, right, and every other investigative agency in the nation investigating me. I've already had seven investigations uh, uh, from different agencies, and uh, I'm still there. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. DeJoy. Uh, the privatization of the Postal Service has kind of been a theme for like a while now, and I think you're kind of an example of the, kind of the efficiency and capability of the private sector. So where do you kind of stand on, you know, a private, a private po Postal Service that would kind of like unhandicap you from a lot of the congressional yeah. mandates and stuff like that? Yeah. I, I, I don't, I mean, I said this in the beginning, it, it's funny, I traveled with, uh, I don't know, maybe with Jeff, I've traveled out to, and I see uh, in some, some city in the Midwest, people holding up signs, um, don't privatize the Postal Service. I mean, that's never been on my agenda. It would not work for the United States, for the American people, right? The fact is that the things that we do, if you go up to Alaska, we, I mean, we bring groceries, you know, to all the, you know, the, 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 uh, you know, the, the tribal, you know, uh, 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 you know, groups out there. And it's a lot. We fly planes. We don't make money. It costs us $500 million a year. 
right? If I say I want to get rid of the Alaska bypass thing, I'll have two, you know, uh, uh, you know, two senators and the uh, say anything about it. Two senators and congressman, the, the oldest congressman who just passed away. I forget what his name yeah. was. Yeah, yeah, I've met with them a number of times. You gotta, you gotta make sure you don't say anything bad because people go crazy up here. Uh, the um, uh, so it would not work because all rural America would get killed, right? Sure, the big urban areas will have plenty of people to deliver whatever you want because it's very, you know, because it's profitable. So I've always been uh, 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 against. And when you look at the legislation, right, it says you're supposed to be a service but act like a, you know, like run like a business. Well. When I think of privatization, it's in fact what I'm doing. I am committed to the mission. There's two inefficiencies in the Postal Service, right? One is the inefficiency of the mission, right? Where you have to go to every house, whether you have two packages, one piece of mail, nothing, and so forth. We're very, I'm very committed to that, right? I saw, I, I see what, when, when we're almost, when there's tragedies in areas, hurricanes, whatever, we're the first sign of life normalcy coming back into this. Uh, uh, so I am committed to that inefficiency and in trying to make it work very well. Then there's the inefficiency of us that has accumulated over the years, which is really bad. I want to root that out violently and expeditiously, right? And that's what I mean when I, when, when, and I think that's what's intended. There is a private mentality, especially as we're moving into the competitive market where 50% of our revenue is, is shared with, you know, uh, has uh, the opportunity for competitor, competitors to, uh, to take away from us. <clears throat> By joining those two, I think there's a, a way to join those two missions and cover our cost, right? I'm not trying to conquer the world, just trying to cover our costs. But privatization of the Postal Service, first of all, would never, the OIG, uh, the GAO also puts out, and this is what they do in Washington. They, when we were getting a lot of activity, they say uh, the, um, Congress should evaluate the structure of the Postal Service. Congress should evaluate what the Universal Service mission is, and Congress should evaluate some other thing, right? Those are policy discussions, right? Go ahead and do that. It's going to take you. It's going to, who knows if anything can get passed? Who knows, you know, how long it's going to take? I got to operate within the laws that we have right now, within the mission as defined right now, uh, and I don't think it's, I don't think it's that far out of whack. I just got to raise prices stamps a couple cents every year and got to get, you know, five, six, seven percent of cost out of our infrastructure uh, 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 and, and, and keep the place pumped up. And that's what I'm off to do. And we'll, we'll, we'll succeed. I think we have time for the last three questions here. So, yeah. Hello. Thank you so much for your time and talking to us today. Uh, I really enjoyed it and I learned a lot. Um, obviously, with the, the organization that you run, the Postal Service, you have done a lot of great things. Um, and that comes with a lot of responsibility and tasks. Um, and obviously I can tell that you're a very busy person and this might be a little bit less topical of a question, but just to get a sense of what your job entails, what is your daily routine like? <laughs> you wouldn't be able to keep up yet, young fellow. I can tell you that. But you'll get, you look like if you get some mileage on you, you will eventually. Uh, it is, uh, first of all, we have 650,000 people. And we cover half the globe and operate in every country around the world. It's the third largest entity in the United States of America with the, one of the most broadest applications. Um, uh, uh, I run to the office in the morning. Uh, I do get to get out and run, you know, do my exercise in the morning. I get to the office in the morning, and I, my calendar goes from uh, uh, my meetings start at 9.30 and go up until 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. I go into my board. As I told you, I broke the organization apart. I'm, in, I'm not in a management role. I'm in a transformation role, which means I have to have my thumb on everything because I have a lot of smart talented people. I love this team. I love, I love the place. I love this team. They just, I'm kind of like a chiropractor. They kind of need to be <laughs> turned this way and that way, and then they'll get going. It's very, very competent. And I am in the details. I am in the details. So I look at lanes. We're trying to fix the place. I look at lanes. I look at plants. I go out to plants. I, uh, uh, I, I meet with, uh, we strengthen our communications group. We strengthen our government relations group. Uh, right there, where's, where's Peter Pastor? Uh, this is, stand up. This is a new, uh, 
He's the one who was very much involved with me in trying to uh, pass the, the legislation, a monumental uh, uh, task, and he, was, uh, he, led, he leads my government relations group. Uh, but I, meet, I meet with his group, and I manage three levels down, at least. So there are people, there are hundreds of people in the organization that have never met a postmaster general before. And I'm in there talking about their specific routine and what it is they're doing and how they're contributing to the, uh, uh, you know, how they, they're contributing to the thing. So it's extremely busy. I have political meetings. I have communications meetings. Uh, 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 we have ramped up. You know, we, the Postal Service was never, I felt bad about this, was never under attack like it was under attack when I got there. And it was all because I got there, right? And I had a life before that. Uh, so we had to really ramp up our communications uh, a, a group, and uh, you know, uh, uh, Jeff Adams is here. Stand up, Jeff, another uh, uh, good guy. He was, uh, and these, he was in a, you know, a lot. I promoted a lot of the 14 people sitting around me. They were all promoted from within. I got rid of the, you know, some of the high end, you know, the, the people at the table. My first meet, couple of meetings at the executive conference was, it was like a wax museum. Like, you guys got any problems you're working on here? You no, know, no. Uh, so it's very engaged in that, in, 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 in that standpoint. It's the most interesting thing. If you want an interesting job, if you want to feel applied, if you want to use every talent that you possibly have, whether it's this much or this much, become Postmaster General. It's really, <laughs> it, it's really something else. Great. Am I taking too long, Peter? You look a little anxious. No, I just, we're going to have time for the last two. We'll make it. Hello, sir. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, I think we have all learned a lot. Um, I wanted to ask a question about how, what did you learn from of going from a private citizen that was a big donor in the political system to actually being involved in passing something through yeah. uh, the legislation? Did it shift your view of yeah. the entire political system as a well? whole? Yeah, it's a great question. So let me start out with, I really haven't changed much. Right? I've been a, a fighter, and I've been, uh, I, I make plans, and I try and execute on those plans. And um, um, I, I did that in my private life, and I did that in my personal life, and I'm doing this here at the Postal Service. And I talk a lot with, with, uh, uh, about ownership. You know, I own the problem, so I say a lot, my this and my that, and, but it's sending a message to all the people here that uh, you're, you're, you're contributing to a, a, a different goal than the way you used to operate. You used to operate in little tangents off to, you know, off to the side. So uh, that's all the same. Um, I did a lot of things. When I look back, I did a lot of things at the time. Uh, 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 number one, I needed to create attention because as it was important to get attention. I had a lot of confidence I would get out of whatever mess I got into. I'm used to that. I've gotten myself in a lot of messes over my life. Uh, 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 and at the end of the day, it was a time, and one of the reasons I took the job, it was a time for some brute force, right? We're an independent agency, and what I told them, we're an independent agency for a reason, because we're supposed to solve our own problems, right? We're supposed to move the organization forward. And uh, uh, that's pretty you know, all-encompassing, and that also gives me a lot of authority. So I, I did, I, I, I moved forward. Along the way, um, there are days uh, that I could be a little bit more of an adult. I could lend a little bit more of an ear uh, to things, and um, uh, I'm learning a, a little bit better to put the you know, brakes on. But I'll tell you, I learned that early when this whole thing was going on about the collection boxes that were being collected that I had no idea were being collected. It's been going on for a thousand years and the uh, uh, taking out the sorting machines, whatever, which only ran at like 20% capacity uh, and all this big hubbler uh, and, uh, and running the trucks on time. And I went and met up with the, with the speaker and the Schumer and Steve Mnuchin and everything and everybody was like, you gotta do this. I, and I wanted to, uh, this was my stage to say, we're an independent agency and We've already made that decision, and we're moving forward. But the nation was such an outroar about this, right? It meant nothing. And I, I, I learned that in these types of situations, 
right? Um, uh, uh, you you should uh, should bend a little, right? And I, I I went and stopped the things you know from from continuing, right? Because I just wanted to stop. I wanted to stop the noise. Now I was also you know, said, put them back, and I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't put them back, because that was, like, totally ridiculous. They go, put, we didn't even know where the parts were or where they, where they were, right? So, so the end of the day, it is, a, it is a public mission, right? I do serve the public, but in my mind, the be best way is to make sure this thing is here 10 years from now and thriving, right? And I don't have time to educate everybody, right? It's pretty operational and tactical, and that's what, you know, that's what I'm doing, but I do need to lend a, a better ear. I need to get better at that, right? And uh, uh, now that you pointed that out, I'll, I'll go back and do so. <laughs> Hi, um, thank you very much for being here. And as I feel like it's my obligation as a last question to leave us off with a note of uh, wisdom, which I'd very much appreciate. You talked about managing the political sphere, uh, sphere and also the private enterprise and how that helped you along the way and it gave you the uh, information you needed to run this public organization. But at the end of your talk, you talked about how fulfilling it was to work for the postal office and what you were able to achieve. So I was wondering if you could make a case for us who are looking for what to do with the next part of our lives as we move past school to see what is your case for serving in public life? Yeah. So, I mean, the first thing I would ask you to decide on is the, you know, is how important is money to you, right? Because there is not much there, right? And um, uh, when I uh, first came from my background and where I came from and what I, how I, you know, grew up, um, uh, money was, you know, right up there with breathing, you know, in, in terms of, you know, what was important for me when I was in my 20s and, and so forth and set me down that, uh, 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 you know, path. Uh, I substituted... My, I, I do, I mean, I do feel like many within, within the government, I do have a, a passion for public service. Uh, uh, I, I do have uh, my own ideology, and I also have my own uh, 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 ability to collaborate and get things uh, done, and that's how I substituted it. But if you don't, if you, if you can live by, if you get an inheritance or you can live on, you know, no more than two or three hundred thousand dollars a year, uh, 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 you know, when you're in your 50s, because that's how long it'll probably take you to get to that, uh, you know, to that uh, 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 number, then you, you really, you're serving the American people. There's nothing like serving the American people. Uh, that's why, and there's so many bright minds, uh, and they uh, 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 are so... Um, uh, dedicated. I mean, a postal service. I mean, it, it, it you know, in, in everything. I worked in with the HHS and DLA on on, on, on test kits, and it, it was just fat. You know, wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, people committed to the uh, uh, the cause. Uh, and I would recommend that uh, uh, you do that. But if you want money, you ain't getting it there. And then that's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, those are the. T that's really how you need to think about. It. Do I want money or do I want you know the 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 rewarding feeling of serving, you know, serving the public, which is, uh, you know, really, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm glad at this point in my life uh, to, to have this, you know, have this role and impact this type of organization the way I feel, I feel is a positive way, is, is really, um, uh, 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 really special, so. Thank you. So I think many of us feel like we know and are fond of our letter carrier, uh, but most of us feel like we don't know the Postmaster General, but after today, everyone who's in this room or watches the show will feel like they really know the Postmaster General, and for that, we're very much in your debt. Thank you for your public service. Thank you. Enjoyed it. But I'm still raising your stamp prices. <laughs>